Okay, well, Megan was like, whatever about the book. Okay, because I have a new plan now. It's called 40 for 40. You guys listen to this hellacious plan. And I remember hearing about it at the time and being like, well, that's lame. Like, that's the, like, the lamest thing I've ever heard. Like, that's the, that's the greatest embarrassment I have ever seen or heard about. And the fact that there was so little follow-up to it. Okay, so this was the plan. This is her 40 for 40, right? So Megan's turning 40. And her big plan was to get 40 notable women to spend 40 minutes with 40 different ladies and try to figure out how to get them back on track after the COVID break. Like, let's get them some work. How are you gonna do that in 40 minutes? You know, and, 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 you know, what, what, what is like, you know, Melissa McCarthy gonna do for me in 40 minutes? And like, we don't have any idea who these 40 women were. The, we don't know anything about this project. Who were the 40 celebrities that were gonna like climb off of their, you know, climb off of Mount Olympia and like come help the, the poor urchins in the streets, you know, and, you know, give them 40 golden minutes to figure out how to get employment. You know, it's like, you're gonna need more than 40 minutes to find a new job. And like, what is this person gonna do? They're gonna go and like help you fill out applications at the Best Buy? Like literally, what are you talking about? 40 minutes, like what? Who are these people? Like how, how awkward would that be? Like you're already in a very vulnerable position. You don't have work. And then like this gorgeous with it celebrity comes and they're like, okay, how are you gonna? Hi, my name's, you know, I'm Cameron Diaz, what's, Okay, your name's Jenny. Okay, well, Jenny, like, what was your work before COVID? Okay, you worked at a daycare. All right, um, and you can't find work at another daycare. Okay, um, well, maybe we could Google some options. It's like, how, who, what, what, what plan was this? It's so embarrassing. It's so cringe on every level. And no, no wonder she couldn't actually find 40 people to be involved on either end, right? Tom Bauer writes, he says, on her 40th birthday, she issued a video launching her 40 for 40 initiative. Filmed in her house behind a large table piled with her book, she explained how a clutch of famous women had been recruited to devote 40 minutes each to help women return to work after the pandemic. Although she did not explain what could be achieved in 40 minutes and the humor in the brief video of comic actress Melissa McCarthy fell flat, the snapshot raised her profile and reaffirmed her commitment to women's empowerment. The results were never revealed but the next jigsaw piece was even more profound. Okay, so she's done her little 40 for 40, you know, initiative. She said she wants to help people. This is this is really honestly very much like when Amber Heard talked about, well, I pledged the money, you know? Because yeah, you said, you, you set up this lame plan, but what did you ever do to fulfill the lame plan? We have never seen the light of day to any of this. Where are any of the 40 women who were helped? Who are any of the 40 women who had, you know, condescended to come help in the first place? Okay, so she, she came up with the initiative, just like Amber Heard pledged the money, all right. And, uh, but the next thing that she decided to like dip her toe in the political waters, she started cold calling these different politicians. She called the senators from Maine and the senators from West Virginia. And she's like, you know what I think you guys need to do? You need to vote that moms should get more time off after they have a baby. That should be something that's a huge priority for you. Okay. Well, uh, it would be nice to get more paid, you know, time off until you could spend with your baby, but both senators appeared underwhelmed by the calls. Not least, both found it ironic that Megan should use her royal title because she called them introducing herself as, uh, hi, this is Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. You know, she could have just said Meghan Markle. We know who that is too. But no, hi, this is Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. I think you need to make sure moms get more time off after they have their babies. Yeah, because Meghan cared so much about that, even though she is the one who said, I don't need time off because I love to work. So I'm not going to be taking any paid leave. Remember that? When she was a, the royal... When, when back on her royal duties and she made a big stink about the fact that she loves work so much and she's so committed to the job that she didn't need any time off. But yet she wants to make it like this big thing that moms should be spending time with their babies. Well, what about you, Megan? Didn't you want to spend time with Archie? Lily Bat? And uh, you're not worried about that? Okay, but she wants to make sure that everybody knows that it's important. Look, I do think it's important, but what would be even greater is if we could live in a society in which it didn't have to be two people working and one person would be free to take care of the kids. That is the society that I'd love to live in. 
you know, I'm not saying that you couldn't have like your side thing that you could do and that there would be great if you had time to do something that was just like your own passion project as a mother. But like, wouldn't it be great if you lived in a society where it was a potential for like one person to earn a very decent living and the other person could be solely devoted to running this shit? Because let me tell you, taking care of the kids, taking care of school, taking care of the food, that is a job in of itself. That is a huge job in of itself. And wouldn't it be nice if we lived in a world where both people didn't have to work so you could just inch along in life? All right, but that's for another podcast. Anyway, she says let's give them some more time, even though she personally didn't think that she needed it. Um, and it is interesting that she should call herself Megan the Duchess of Sussex, particularly because, do we recall back when she was interviewed for Vanity Fair and she said that she had never defined herself by her relationships and yet this relationship to the royal family is the only thing that's keeping her going so she's always got to introduce herself as hi I'm Megan the Duchess of Sussex well nobody really cared those two senators were less than impressed so she moved on the two telephone calls were preceded by letters from Megan to the house speaker Nancy Pelosi and senate majority leader Chuck Schumer to support her cause, the Duchess of Sussex described her childhood to the po politicians as poor. I grew up on the 499 salad bar at Sizzler. And she also repeated once again how she had worked at the age of 13 at a local yogurt shop. Quite frankly, who gives a damn, right? I mean, how many of us grew up poor? I grew up poor as dirt. I mean, I had nothing, you know? And it's like, I'm... You know, I, ha I have way more now than I had as a kid, right? But how many of us have that story where like our parents were struggling when we were growing up and, and you know, you, you had to share a bedroom and you wore hand-me-downs from your cousins. And, you know, it's like some of us were way, you know, were much worse off than even that, you know, but you don't see us writing letters to the senators being like, I think you should do what I tell you to do because I grew up poor. It's like, all right, well, like so did most of us, you know? And as the world goes on and people are finding a higher standard of living and different ways to make money, you know, life can get a little better for you. But it's not a feather in your cap because you grew up poor. Yeah, you and everybody else. I mean, so few people are living up in that 1%, okay? And just because now, Megan, you live in the top 1%, that's not where most people live. So it's nothing... To it's nothing to anybody that you grew up poor and you had to eat, you know, the four ninety nine dollars salad bar at Sizzler. Thank God you had something to eat. All right, tell that to the children in Africa who would love to have four ninety nine dollars Sizzler salad. Okay, and this job at the yogurt shop, you and everybody else had to work. Okay, and believe me, 13 years old at the yogurt shop, they couldn't even employ you at age 13 at the yogurt shop. You had to be at least 15, so even that's so much a BS. But we know you didn't have a job because your dad said that he never wanted you to work. He wanted you to focus on school, and you never even had a summer job. Okay, so you're 13, hey, there I was, a child worker at the yogurt shop, you know, chomping on my salad between, you know, during my 15-minute breaks. Please. Harry and Meghan were on a roll, though. They voiced concern that the world was exceptionally fragile. And what is astounding to me is they came out and they their two pain, their two pain points that they hammered on about saying the world is so fragile. By the way, yes, the world is fragile. You know, we're hanging in the balance here. But they were really upset like we all were during the Afghanistan situation in which America just inexplicably pulled out and let the Taliban take over everything. And we literally gave them billions of dollars of equipment so they could just, you know, party on after everything that had been on in that country. And that's what, the, that, 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 that's what happened? You know, we, we, could, we couldn't even just like pace ourselves to get out in a timely fashion so that the people who were there weren't stranded and murdered and raped? I mean, yeah, that was a fiasco, right? So yeah, if they were upset about it, yeah, me too, Megan and Harry. It is a little concerning the way that worked out. Okay, uh, but then they were also left scared by the new variants and the constant mis misinformation about COVID. All right, well, you guys, I'm not, I, <laughs> COVID was a hot mess, all right? We know that there is so much misinformation inexplicably. And the only thing we can determine at this point was that it was a control mechanism to see what they could get us to agree to do. Uh, that's not a conspiracy theory. There's too much that's come out now. We, you know, and anybody who was paying attention at the time was like, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, that doesn't make sense. Well, that doesn't make sense, you know? 
stupid plexiglass in front of like, people's faces, children in band practice who had to wear a mask but cut a hole in the mask so that they could play the saxophone. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like there was just too much that was like, well, that's a bunch of BS. Why am I doing this? Yeah, we're all having to do it. The mandatory vaccine and all this. It's a bunch of BS. It was all to control our movements. All right, okay. But Megan and Harry want to complain about Afghanistan. They want to complain about the misinformation about COVID and like why the rules keep switching. And what I think is really ironic, and this is not me being political, I'm just stating the truth. The political alignment that they have hewn for themselves it's peculiar that they're wanting to criticize the fragility of the world in this Afghan in the in, in this post Afghanistan situation, COVID misinformation situation. And it's like, but you don't understand that the party that you're supporting is also uh, heavily influencing both of those things that you are so distraught about. Look, I think that both political parties are a hot mess. I think that there are liars on both sides. I think that, it, that the lies go straight up to the top on both sides. I am sickened by most of the things that I see in American politics. So this is not me taking sides on e in either way. Okay, but what I am saying to you is Megan and Harry to complain about Afghanistan and to complain about COVID misinformation is to complain against the very party that they've aligned themselves with and have, you know, gotten into the bed with and rolled around with, you know, all these people who they are, you know, wanting this attention and this accolades and these relationships, those are the very people making decisions that you are so opposed to. Okay, whatever. Harry and Meghan, hypocrisy is your brand. That is what you like to do. So does it surprise me that you would support these people and then complain about the policies? No. Does it surprise me that right after they get finished saying that the world is hanging in the balance and it's so fragile and that you know, the climate crisis is going to take us all down and then go from Aspen to Santa Barbara in a private plane right after you finish telling Oprah that climate change is the most pressing issue facing the world ever? No, because you people are hypocrites. You're always going to say one thing and do another or do one thing and say another without exception. So no, I'm not surprised. If you weren't hypocrites, you probably wouldn't even be alive. It's like your lifeblood here.